Hello friends, you are watching a Rudire Plus, the professional CAD CAM solution provider. This channel provides basics of finite element analysis and computer-aided mechanical engineering design and analysis using CAD-related software. Let's get started. Hello friends, today I will show some basics of SOLIDWORKS flow simulation through a very basic example of flow through a pipe. In this case, we will show how to utilize equation goals, how to find out whether the flow is turbulent or laminar or it is transition and also we will show that whether the, the flow is completely developed or partial developed that we checked using equation goals, right? Mainly through this example, we will show how to form some basic equation goals, right? Let's start it. We will start with a very simple pipe. So let's start it from the front plane, normal to sketch let's draw one line let's provide smart dimension to that one uh, let's take the dimension equal to thousand millimeter let's provide smart dimension to this one as thousand millimeter complete so exit from the sketch and select the sketch again and features swept boss base and i want this one to be a circular profile so select circular profile let's take the dimension equal to 110 millimeter done green check shell to be used shell select the edges or faces and we want shell thickness of 5 millimeter green check done we got that desired pipe of internal diameter 100 millimeter and length equal to 1000 millimeter okay right now for better understanding of this flow through this one can make the completely transparent so changing the transparency of this one done Again, from inside also to make it transparent. Change transparency, it is done. Right, it's completely transparent model. We can see the flow trajectories through this pipe. Okay, now we have to provide leads to the front and back ends tools. Create leads. For getting leads, we have to select the surfaces. First surface is done. Now we have to select the second surface also. And both the faces we have provided lead. Okay, right now we we'll save it. Save it. Next one, we have to create an environment for flow solution that can be done using wizard. Wizard. The default name of the project we are keeping as project one. And next, let's provide this one unit as SI system. Temperature will consider as degree centigrade. Next, it is an internal analysis. So next, and liquid we are considering water that will be passing through this pipe next default wall thermal condition and roughness we are considering next we are considering the normal temperature equal to 20 degrees centigrade then finish it we can see the computational domain so we can make it hidden hide it now we have to apply boundary conditions so for better application of boundary conditions we can make the segment and view of this model let's make it up from the front plane now we have to apply boundary conditions let's insert boundary condition let's provide inlet velocity of one meter per second at the entry surface you can see the thermodynamic parameters it will be 20 degrees centigrade We're done so green check inlet condition is provided now let's see the outlet condition so again we have to provide another boundary condition insert boundary condition and it will be the atmospheric pressure at the exit end so select that end green check both the conditions have been applied properly so we can see the model as a complete view done next one we will see the goals this is our main aim right so goals we want to have only equation goals this is our main aim right so selecting equation goal First of all, we have to find out the Reynolds number, right? So what should we do is Reynolds number, we know the formula equal to rho VD divided by mu. So first of all, you have to provide the value of rho, that is density, right? Considering this one as uh, 20 degrees centigrade, right? At 20 degrees centigrade, density of water equal to 998 kg per meter cube. That should be multiplied by velocity. Velocity we can take from the input variables. Let's take the parameters velocity will come from boundary conditions we can select from here inlet velocity velocity normal to the entry face so we have provided 
density multiplied velocity that should be multiplied by diameter of the pipe and that is equal to in this case 100 millimeter that means it will be 0 0.1 meter whole divided by mu that is dynamic viscosity so we can provide the bracket to this one at the entry and exit places we are putting bracket that should be divided by dynamic viscosity that is equal to 1.002 into 10 to the power minus 3 so we can provide that value equal to within bracket 1.002 e minus 3 it will have no unit let's see whether it is okay or not the equation is done now we can rename this this one as r e Reynolds number done next one will provide some other goals insert equation goal now what we want to do is we want to see that whether the flow is fully developed or it is partial developed right so for fully developed flow we have to see the effective length we know that for laminar flow and turbulent flow and the fully developed flow equations are completely different let's provide the equation for this effective length for laminar flow it will be equals to 0 0.06 multiplied by Reynolds number and Reynolds number will come from goal Reynolds number multiplied by diameter so diameter will be 0 0.1 so equal laminar flow the effective length equation equal to 0 0.06 multiplied Reynolds number multiplied by diameter so it will be having unit of meter you can provide the unit of this one as meter then length so this equation is done we can rename this equation as we can rename this as effective length LE for laminar flow now we have to do another thing like effective length for turbulent flow it will be different again so we are inserting another equation insert equation goal and that for turbulent flow effective length equation equal to 4.4 multiply Reynolds number whole to the power 1 upon 6 multiplied by diameter so it will be 4.4 multiplied by Reynolds number so that will come from the goals whole to the power 1 upon 6 we can provide this one within whole to the power 1 upon 6 so within bracket you can put multiplied by diameter it is 0 0.1 and the unit of this one is also again meter it is length so done we have created two different equations first one is Reynolds number and if the Reynolds number is more than 4000 it will be turbulent flow and if it is less than 4000 it will be it may be transition or it may be laminar one for transition one it will be 2300 to 4000 it will be in the range of transition flow so we can clearly define again if the Reynolds number is less than 2300 it is laminar flow if it is in between 2300 and 4000 it is known as transition flow and if it is more than 4000 it is turbulent flow so from this equation goal we have to see whether the Reynolds number is above the turbulent flow if it is more than 4000 we have to follow the equation for turbulent one right now we can rename this as effective length for turbulent flow all the equations have been defined properly now we can run it and see the results okay can run it let's run it it will take one or two minutes for running these iterations it already started it has already started running so it is complete solver is finished you can see the results directly here in this case we are not bothered over seeing the cut plots we don't want to see the cut plots surface plots and also we are not bothered about these flow trajectories mainly we are concerned about the equation goals and seeing the results right so goal plots insert goal plots when you see all the goal plots show so these are the results first one we will see that the Reynolds number is 99600 so it is definitely turbulent flow so in that case we have to select the second one that means effective length for the turbulent flow should be 2.996 meter away right so we have made the pipe length equal to 1 meter uh, for completely developed flow we want to make the pipe to be 2.96 meter that is approximately three times you have to increase the length then only fully developed flow can be observed in this pipe right 
and this is not laminar flow so we are not bothered about the first answer so first answer can observe it can be achieved if the length of the pipe is increased to 597 meter away so if the length of the pipe is 597 that means you can say approximately 600 meter then only you can observe laminar flow okay so this is all about our today's basics of solid flow solution if you like this video please subscribe and share and if you have any kind of doubts please write to me thank you so much for watching this video thank you again bye